everybody, it's Sam Mixed Up Craft. Thanks for watching my tutorial today. I've got this really um, very cute um, photo album or scrapbook. Um, it's entirely up to you. Um, I'm really, really pleased with how this one has turned out. It's such a nice, solid, lovely little gift. Um, I have got someone in mind for this one and also for the one that I'm going to be making today. Um, I'm actually starting my uh, homemade Christmas presents already. So these are going to be going to a family member at Christmas time. Um, I always like to do some DIY um, Christmas presents along with normal gifts as well um, but um, I always think it's nice to just have something that's uh, a little bit special so I'm already starting so that's good. Um, so anyway these are five by five um, so they're a nice size um, and they hold uh, 16 um, of these little photo um, panels. Um, mine are going to be, it's going to be a photo album, it's also going to be a little scrapbook so I've got those little um, pictures that you get from the photo booths, you know your passport size photos, I've got lots of them so I'm going to be using them and I've got obviously then little scrapbooking bits and pieces that I'm going to be using. Um, and you could also use this side so I may well end up putting some little, um, maybe some sentiments or something on this side. Um, as well um, but they are just lovely you can see there how they all you could put something on the, bo the back there as well if you want to finish that a bit more but I just thought the basic kind of um, structure I'm going to show to you today um, the bind is a mix of washi tape and PVA glue so I've given it a nice shine and it is super strong so and it's not you know it opens well and everything so um, and then there's the back as well and it will fit nice in a book um, shelf as well um, and again if you want to put something on the bind you can but for now I've, I'm quite minimal with things like this I like it just quite simple um, so let's crack on and make it so you are going to need there's lots and lots of bits so grab yourself um, a piece of paper or check out the link for my blog which will have all the measurements on it as well now first of all you need some kind of chipboard or strong card. Now what I use is I keep all of my, um, the kind of the top sheet and the back sheet of all my 12 by 12 papers. So all the papers that you see me use are from this um, company called um, Eno Greeting. Um, they're a Chinese wholesale. Um, I've been on their website, I've mentioned it to, um, before in other videos. Um, I'm, I can't seem to purchase from them directly and I haven't yet found another place selling them in a shop. The shop that I bought these from, which I can pretty much see from the window now, is closed down. So I was absolutely gutted um, because these were about £2 each a pack, so maybe $3. So, And they're lovely, lovely papers. Anyway, enough of that. So all I used for this is, there's the top sheet and the bottom sheet for this particular pack. And actually the papers I'm going to use are this one here. And if you can find it, this is the Retro Series paper pack. Um, loads of glue. Um, I used my Pritt Stick glue. Sandwich them together this way. Just in case any papers you were going to use were maybe a bit thinner, you don't want to be able to see any of this. So that's why I've done them that way. Let that dry overnight so it became nice and hard. Um, and then I cut it in half and then stuck them on top of each other again to then give you this. And you can see now that is really, really hard piece of now could be used as chipboard. So... You can also do this with cereal boxes, you'll get exactly the same, um, but you want a nice strong glue. So some of the PVA glues, they um, are strong as in they won't, um, you know, they stick, but they can be, still be quite bendy. But this Pritt stick that I use, which is from Walmart, but um, I imagine any other good quality Pritt sticks will give more of a, a hard um, finish. So that's what I've done for that. Otherwise, if you've just got normal chipboard, then perfect. But you do need to be able to score it and it will need to be able to bend, so bear that in mind. Um, so I have here all of my bits and pieces. So I'm going for a pink and like a minty green colour. So this is those papers from that pack I just showed you. I've got this lovely sentiment for the front. So first of all, the paper that you're going to need, so your main paper for your case. So in this case here, it was this grey um, design. This needs to measure 12 by 6. 
you just need one piece of that. Then your chipboard, so there's my piece here that I've cut down, to 11 and a quarter by 5. Then you need your um, paper that's going to go inside, just to kind of cover up all your fold lines and everything. That's 11 by 4 and 3 fours. I've kept mine white, but again, any colour scheme you want to use. Then for your actual um, panels, so you need 16 of these, 8 on each side. And these measure, what have I got here? So the pink card is 3 and a quarter by 4 and 5 eighths. Okay, so 16 pieces of the pink. Then the pattern paper is two and three quarters by four and three eighths of an inch. And again, you need 16 pieces of that. And then what I done, I didn't do with this one, and it's not, I mean, you probably didn't notice it on the video, but I picked it up, is I stuck all these down separately, directly onto the back of this, which is fine. But what I found is I was slightly maybe going off by like a, a millimetre to the left, and then slightly I'd be going off to the right. And just if I look at it, I can see that it's not dead straight. Um, but that's me being picky, but I wanted to obviously make sure that, that didn't happen for this project. So I've made these two guide panels. So you need two of these, which are four and five eighths of an inch by two inches. I'll go through all the scoring in a minute, but basically I stuck all of these onto this little panel first. And then I've got sticky back plastic on the back of that, double sided tape, sorry. Um, and then that whole thing got stuck down and I found I got a much, much better finish because I've already done one of them for you. So um, yeah, so two pieces of that. Um, and then I've just got a sentiment, um, I just chose these again, I keep forgetting who this one's by, but I use them for my um, slide and stand cards for my um, creative card series that i done recently, um, so I'll grab the name from that and put it in my blog, um, but these are just a couple of sentiments that I had left over, so you are someone's reason to smile, and that one was make every day count. I think these are lovely. So that's what I'm using today. And then I've just um, mounted it um, with the corresponding um, papers. Okay, so let's go through some scoring. So let me just grab my scoreboard. Okay. Oh, and then a washi tape. So I've just got this pinky polka dot, which is going to complement my colours really well. Um, so again, but that's optional. But it also... Um, some of the cards, it doesn't matter, if, even if they're good quality cards, um, they may well crack. Fortunately, these ones didn't, but if they do crack, you can either distress them um, with distress inks on the sides, um, otherwise washi tape's great as well. So it can save your projects, so don't worry if it does crack. Okay, so first of all, so you don't need to worry about scoring that or that. The chipboard... Um, no, you don't need your scoreboard for that. We will be scoring it, but not on the scoreboard. All you need to score here are these, let me get one that's the plain, are your little panels. So just on the pink, the larger panel, not on the pattern paper that's going on top, um, along the three and a quarter inch side, um, you just need to score at one quarter all the way down and do that on all 16 pieces. And basically, you just fold that piece over I've already put my strong, I've used the red tape throughout this project, um, and then that's going to be what we stick down, and then that will create the little flap to lift it up and down. Okay, so that is all the scoring for those. Then keep your stylus and just grab a ruler. Um, it's this one here. Um, because this is so thick, it wouldn't go through your scoreboard, so it's easier to just score with your ruler and your stylus. So what you want to do first of all is you just want to score and um, just put a little marker at five inches in from each side. So just put a little knock, um, notch there or get a pencil, it's entirely up to you. And then coming out from this side, you just want to do five inches again. And again, put a little marker there and then that will give you a one and a quarter bind. Okay, And then do again the same at the bottom. So again... Just mark five inches there, and from this side again, there's five inches there. And then you just want to join those two notches up, and then just heavily score. So keep just scoring through it, like so. Don't go crazy, crazy. I caught it a bit there, but it, it's fine because it's on the inside. Um, and this is just so it can kind of help it um, fold. Okay, so again, just go through there and you'll see what I've done. Okay, 
So that is that all out of the way. Get rid of that up there. Um, okay, so what we will do now is we will stick our lovely paper onto our chipboard here. Um, so what you want to do first of all is on the reverse, so the, the side that you've scored, flip it over so you've got your plain side here. Again, I'm just going to use my strong Pritt stick and you just want to really cover that with plenty of glue. If you can't get a hold of chipboard or you don't have any strong cards, you can do this with just a couple layers of normal um, cardstock. It would just mean it would be a slightly more of a you know, um, thinner um, case around it, so which is not a bad thing. So you don't have to have it as a super strong um, as I've done. So you know, again, don't be put off. Um, okay, so we've got that all glued up. Get rid of some of that. I always put a little apron on. So if you ever see me doing this, I'm not rubbing it on my clothes. I've got a little. I'll say apron, just like a little thing, so I don't get it on my clothes. Okay, so just lie your 12 by 6 paper down, and then you just want to kind of roughly put this in the middle, like so. Again, don't worry too much if it's a little bit crooked or anything, because you're going to be covering up all your seams. And then if you just grab your bone tool, just high pressure just making sure that's all nicely stuck and then we'll flip it over in a second like so if you've got delicate paper be careful because you don't want to rip it like so okay now what I would just suggest is if you're using a wet glue or um, you know even like this Pritt stick is I know the chipboard's very strong, but you can see already it's maybe kind of just lifting a little bit. Just put it under a book, or in my case I'm going to put it under, I've got the electronic um, big, uh, big Blue by Tattered Lace, so it's very, very heavy, so I always put my stuff under that. So I'm going to do that now while we carry on and do all the other bits, um, and it just means it just keep it nice and flat. So I'm just going to lift my... Ooh. There we go. All right. So now, leave that to one side. So what you want to do is grab one of your um, guide panels that I've called them here. And actually, you do need to scoreboard again. I totally forgot about this one. So what you want to do here is along the two inch side, is you just want to score at a quarter, or at every quarter of an inch. So at one quarter, at a half, three quarters, one, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarters, and two. And just do that all the way along. You're not going to burnish these or anything. They're purely there as a guideline. Okay. Get rid of that one. Okay, so then you want to grab all of your pieces. Now, I've run out of this paper, so my last one's going to be plain, um, which is fine. Um, I might find something else to do on that anyway. Um, so what we're going to do now is do this actual waterfall effect. Um, so I've got another spare one there as well. So what you want to do is grab your panel, burnish all of these sides which I mentioned to you before, and then I've put my red tape on the back of this. And starting from the top one, you just want to line up the top of this here to the top of this white card. Make sure your both your ends are nicely lined up. Like so. Okay. And there we have it. And then you want to do the next one. And basically it just means that you are going to stay within those lines. You're not going to really go off in the wrong direction. So again, just line it up underneath that last one you've stuck down. Like so. You can see that it's starting to come together. So again, do the next one. Like 
so there we go and you just want to continue that all the way down until you've covered all of those there and you will end up with one like this so here's one i done earlier so all stuck down and then all we have to do is take that backing off and stick that whole thing onto our um, inside of our album so it was much much easier doing it this way um, so I'm going to carry on and stick all those down. Okay, so I've stuck all those down now. Now, once that's stuck down onto the album, you might find that they kind of lift up a bit like this. So a few things to help this. Obviously, over time, it will naturally just end up falling um, down anyway. But just go along and just burnish the top score line there of each one. So that's one way. Also, once you start adding your photos, that's going to be more weight onto it. So that will also bring them down a bit more as well. So, um, you know, and once it's closed and they're against each other, um, it will all kind of help it as well. So it's just like anything when it's new, it's obviously very kind of strong, but that will make a difference as well. Okay. So also another thing I didn't mention is in this one that I done, I also put a white panel on, but I was thinking about it for this one. And I thought actually, because I'm going to be doing like little mini scrapbooks, I don't really need that. But if you did want to do the white on top as well, this measures um, three and five eighths by two and three eighths. Okay. Right. So you now should have two of these panels to go inside. So now I will go and grab my piece back should now have sat nicely. Let's go over again. Also you can make sure there's no air bubbles in it and things like that. Like so. Okay, okay. so what you want to do now, first of all is we're going to stick down these side pieces. So again just grab, I've got a load of it there, but I can use that. Let me just grab, I'll just use my pokey tool for a minute. Do it over this side a bit just so all the glue stays to one side. Squash all that in there. And then all you want to do here is just fold it over like so. And that way you get a really nice sharp fold. Okay. So, just do that again on the other side. Um, just give this mat a good clean, I think. And again, just stick that all down. Then use your bone tool. See there when I squash it. Wash my bone tool now as well. Okay, so now what you want to do is just trim just a little bit. Don't go right down to the corner, just kind of, you can see there, come up a little bit. And again. That one. Like so. And then you want to put the glue all the way along this side. So and again, just grab your bone tool and just squash that down because you'll see any glue coming out. That is now what you should have, and you've got a really nice flat covered panel. Now you want to let that dry. Okay, so a now bit. just go ahead and stick this piece down. So I'm going to stick on here. Don't go right to the end. Okay, and then just lie that down so you get a nice even border on all of your four sides. 
Then grab your bone tool and again just let that all set now. I mean ideally if it like I said if it's the wet glues and stuff leave it overnight um, just so you get a really nice strong um, finish to it. Okay, okay so I've started to fold mine because I just wanted to do a test before I um, obviously started recording again so it's already started to fold nicely and you can see here it hasn't cracked but it's stretched the, the papers um, and what you can do here is just add some um, if you don't want to put washi tape on you want to keep that effect um, you can just add some uh, PVA glue just over it there and that'll just keep it nice and strong um, and you can also get your um, ink pads and your blending tool and put other colours that will complement, so other shades of green um, or very, very light shades of brown. And that will create a really nice shabby chic style as well. Um, I do like that style, but that's not what I want to go for today. Like I said, I've got this washi tape that I'm going to be sticking over anyway. So what you want to do, so obviously you've covered your score lines. So all I've done is just measured in again five inches and just with a bone tool there just roughly started running it up and then I can see just about there where that score line is just kind of go over it it just means that you've got a rough idea of where you want to start applying your pressure and basically you just want to slowly push down and start to lift that card up and just do it slowly Go too quickly then you will risk the um, chance of cracking the card so by doing it this way nice and slowly you'll get a nice finish and a really really strong case and obviously the more this gets played with and stuff the more it will stay in its shape so you know, don't worry at this point, this is very, very new. And what you can do is just kind of go over that side a bit more. Just so it's a bit more prominent, like so. And there you can see the start of our little book, and it is a solid piece, it's really really nice, I really like it and then it's got a lovely bind on it, none of that's cracked, like I said it's just stretched ever so slightly but because I'm going to be covering mine anyway but like I said if you want to keep it like that just to apply some, I'm going to put some PVA glue on it in a minute anyway just because I want to make sure it stays obviously strong um, but there you go, so this inside piece don't worry again because I'm going to be covering that up um, but what you can do again if you're not is just keep kind of really creasing that bend and you'll just stick all that in like so okay so what I'm going to do is stick the insides in no I'm not I'm going to do my washi tape because I need to know how much space I have yeah so I need to do my washi tape first and then I'm sticking over the top of that so Basically, just start from the middle there because you're going to be covering up that join. Actually, I'll start from this side. I'll do this side first. I'm probably going to have to buy another one of these. These were from Walmart. They're a pack of, um, I think you get 10, and they're, they're cheapy. They're not, um, they're not great. They're more of a masking. Um, kind of tape in terms of the stickiness um, so I forgot to add the PVA glue actually it doesn't matter um, yeah so um, in terms of quality they're not great but for what I want it for and you can see that it's just ripping um, for what I want it for it's, it's perfect So, just make sure I'm getting that nice and straight and I'll just go along and finish all the other sides. That's all in place but now I'm going to go along and I'm just going to smother it in this 
glue and that will just set it all in place and help stick that washi which isn't that sticky anyway. Okay so that's all stuck down now nicely and I've put the um, glue over the top of that. I've stuck my sentiment on here and I've also added the pink to it which I didn't have before. Um, I just think it frames it much nicer. Um, so I'm really really pleased with that and then I've gone ahead and I've stuck in the um, this side already although I've gone a bit crooked so I'm a bit annoyed because at the bottom here you can see it's gone off so I think I might have to doctor that off camera but that's basically what you want to have and I'm just going to stick this one down here to show you um, how I've done it so just take off your tape here So, and then basically you just want to get a nice even top and bottom. So I use the top line as my guide. Make sure it's all nice down there. Like so. And just go underneath there and stick all that down. So I think what I'm going to do is add... See that one's up, that one's fine. I'm happy with that side. It's that side there. Again, you might not be able to pick it up, but I can. Um, I also put a little tab in the middle there, so just measure um, one inch by. I could have done with being a bit longer, but this was a scrap piece, so one inch by four um, and three quarters will probably be fine. But there it is. Like I said, they will drop once you put your um, if you put the white on as well. Then they they drop down even more. Um, but once the pictures and everything on are done, that will look lovely. Um, and the more you play with it, the more it will stay in place. Like this one now is obviously nice and, I mean, I've done that a couple of days now. So that's, and I've been playing around with it, opening and closing. Um, but you can see there, two really, really lovely um, little photo albums, waterfall photo album um, or little mini scrapbook. So I hope you like this um, different kind of tutorial from me today. Please hit the like button if you did and subscribe to the channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.